Before we discover what went wrong on earth, we need to understand some things about heaven. This other world, also called paradise, is a place of pure light, enchanting colors, thrilling music, satisfying talk, and unfolding mysteries. Heaven's simplest activities surpass Earth's greatest pleasures. Heaven is another dimension. Heaven is the king's home. The best attraction of this happy place is the king himself. Every corner of the celestial city is designed to reflect his majesty. The city was pure gold, as clear as glass. The most detailed description of heaven is recorded in the last book of scripture, the Revelation. God gave the prophet John a look into heaven and told him to write down what he saw. There before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it, a rainbow that shone like an emerald encircled the throne. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings and peals of thunder. In front of the throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands, and ten thousand times ten thousand. They encircled the throne. They never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Angel means messenger or servant. Angels are spirit beings. Like their creator, angels are invisible to man except when sent on missions where they need to be seen. The king of heaven made angels before he made humans. In his book, he tells us that all the angels shouted for joy as they watched him create the world. God gave his angels the capacity to know obey, praise, and serve him forever. The angels were not God's slaves. As with humans, God did not force them to submit to him. He wanted happy, willing servants. The scriptures tell of one high-ranking angel to whom God had given great intelligence, beauty, and power. If you know this angel's story, then you know where evil came from. Lucifer was one of God's chief angels. His name means shining one. The scriptures of the prophets describe Lucifer as the model of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Then Lucifer started looking at himself instead of on his great creator king. For the first time ever, a created thing became proud of itself Blinded by his own beauty and intelligence, and forgetting who had made him, Lucifer said in his heart, I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. Lucifer wanted to be king. He wanted his will to be done instead of God's will. Sin had entered the universe. Lucifer convinced a third of the angels to join his rebellion. But God, who cannot tolerate sin, threw them out of his heavenly home. Lucifer's name was changed to Satan, meaning accuser. He is also called the devil, meaning deceiver. The evil angels are called demons. In a dark, secret place, God has prepared a prison for the devil and his demons. That place is called hell and the lake of fire. It is a place of eternal separation from God, a place where rebels will cause no more trouble. One day Satan and all his demons will be forever locked up in that prison, but they are not all there yet. So where did these evil spirits go after God threw them out? They moved into Earth's atmosphere. There, the devil organized his angels in ranks. 
If he could not rule in heaven, he would rule on earth. That is why the scripture calls Satan the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. The devil and his demons are invisible to us, but real. While we do not know what they look like, we do know their dark and evil purpose. They will use all sorts of trickery to get people to join their kingdom of darkness and doom. They will stop at nothing to destroy you. Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Now let's get back to the story of our first parents. Adam and Eve's lives were filled with adventure and purpose. Each day was full of wonder as they explored their vast garden, cared for its creatures and plants, and sampled its foods. Each evening was even more wonderful as their creator owner honored them with a personal visit. How they loved to walk and talk with him. The man and his wife were happy in their garden home. But Satan was not happy. He hated God, and he hated these two creatures who reflected the image of God. So the devil, who had failed to seize the kingdom of heaven, plotted to take over the kingdom of earth. If only he could get Adam, the head of the human race, to choose to break God's law. But he would not tempt Adam directly. One day, Eve heard a voice. It wasn't Adam. It wasn't God. It was a serpent. For Eve, a talking reptile was just another new discovery. She had no idea that God's enemy was using the serpent, nor did she know Satan wanted to use her to tempt Adam to break God's law. The serpent had waited patiently, his calculating eyes tracking the woman. Then, at the opportune moment, he hissed out to her, did God really say, you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Satan wanted Eve to doubt God's word. He also wanted her to think that God was keeping something good from her and her husband. The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say, you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. You will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. What would Eve do? God had given Adam and Eve freedom to choose between doing his will or their own. The Lord knew what was best for these special creatures he had made in his own image. He wanted Adam and Eve to trust him, even when they didn't understand the reasons behind his rule. Only God could foresee the terrible, far-reaching consequences of evil, which is why he had told Adam, you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat of it, you will surely die. But now the serpent had told Eve, you will not surely die. Who should Eve trust? Her creator or a creature? This is what happened. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. She ate it. He ate it. Eve ate the forbidden fruit because she was deceived by Satan's tricks. 
Adam ate it because he deliberately chose to go his own way instead of God's way. Instead of submitting to their holy and loving creator, mankind had surrendered to the enemy. Our first parents had sinned. Adam was the appointed head of the human race. It was to him that God had given the command not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It was not until Adam bit into the unlawful fruit that both he and his wife began to feel the dreadful effects of their choice. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Burning shame and heart-wrenching guilt flooded their souls. They felt unclean inside and out. Sin brought shame. Before Adam and Eve broke God's law, they were God conscious and felt no shame. They were honored to be with their creator, to reflect his image and to be his friends. But when they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they became self-conscious and ashamed. Shame replaced honor. They tried to cover their shame with fig leaves, but no amount of self-effort could fix their problem. They were helpless to get rid of the sin that had invaded their souls. They were helpless to restore the honor they had lost. It was afternoon. Soon, their holy and loving creator would come for his evening visit. The thought of seeing him sent shockwaves of terror racing through their bodies. But what would he say to them? What would they say to him? Before they disobeyed God, Adam and Eve rejoiced to see their creator friend each time he came to visit them. Now, they were afraid. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Like disobedient children who try to hide from their parents, Adam and Eve tried to hide from their creator. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And God said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree from which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. Why did Adam and Eve want to hide from God? Because they had sinned. Why did they blame others for their sin? Because they were ashamed. Adam and Eve no longer displayed the holy image of God. Instead of reflecting their creator's holiness and love, they now reflected the devil's rebellion and pride. The first couple had become like a branch broken off a living tree. Their sin had broken off their relationship with the king of the universe. Spiritually, they were dead. Their sin had separated them from the source of eternal life. Physically, they were still alive, but the process of growing old had begun. Death's power had invaded their bodies. And what was the cause of all this death and destruction? Sin.
At the beginning of human history, God and man were together. Peace and joy reigned. Then man broke God's law. On the same day Adam and Eve sinned, God announced some of the far-reaching consequences of their sin. To the woman, he said, with pain, you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. Before sin entered the scene, Eve rejoiced in her husband's selfless love and care, but now their sin contaminated natures would add strife and pain to the joys of marriage. Next, God told the man, cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat of it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. Because of their sin, Adam and Eve had lost dominion over the earth. Their world would now include thorns, pain, sadness, sickness, and death. Some of us are so accustomed to such misery that we accept it as normal. But was it in God's original design for a fragrant rose bush to have vicious thorns? Or for the wonder of childbirth to include intense pain? Or for those created in God's image to grow old and die? No, God did not design the original creation to fight against itself. It was because of man's sin that the earth came under God's curse. Mankind had sinned and mankind must die. The law of sin and death required it. Death is separation. Sin produces three terrible separations. Number one, spiritual death. Man's spirit separated from God. Number two, physical death. Man's spirit and soul separated from his body and from his loved ones. <laughs> Number three, eternal death. Man's spirit, soul, and body forever separated from God in the lake of fire. Man had no way to save himself from the curse of sin. Was there any hope? Satan had stolen the king's special treasure, but the king had a secret plan to buy it back. Because the ransom price the king planned to pay would be so unthinkably high, neither demons nor humans would understand his plan until after it was fulfilled. On the same day Satan captured the human race, God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. When God created serpents, they had legs. Because the serpent was used by Satan to lead humanity into sin, God cursed it to slither on the ground. Did you know that pythons and boa constrictors have tiny nubs under their skin where they once had legs? By making snakes the lowest of beasts, God gave the human family a visual reminder that in his own time, he will crush that ancient serpent called the devil or Satan who leads the whole world astray. Then God said to Satan who had used the serpent, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers, he will crush your head and you will strike his heel. This was the first of many prophecies in which God would, little by little, make known his secret plan to rescue people from Satan, sin, and death. But to hide that plan from Satan and his followers, the king put the prophecy in code. God promised to send to earth a savior, the offspring of a woman. The Savior would have a human mother, but no human father. 
he would be known as the Messiah, meaning the chosen one. Satan would strike the Messiah's heel, but the Messiah would crush Satan's head. What did all this mean? Later the king would make it clear, but for now, God had given Adam and Eve a ray of hope. Thousands of years later, one of the king's prophets would write, the people who walk in darkness will see a great light. The virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. God is with us. The king would ransom his special treasure. But how much would it cost? Do you remember what Adam and Eve did after they ate the forbidden fruit? They made coverings of fig leaves. Did their coverings make them feel comfortable in the presence of their creator judge? No, they felt ashamed and guilty. They had no way to make themselves right with God. So God did something for them. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. Who made the first animal sacrifice ever? God did. The Lord killed some animals, made coats of skin, and dressed Adam and Eve. By doing this, God was teaching them some basic lessons about his justice, mercy, and grace. Let's think about these three important words. Justice. Look at the dead animals. Why did God sacrifice them? He did it to show Adam and Eve that the law of sin and death must be upheld. Their sin must be punished with death. That is justice. Mercy. Look at Adam and Eve. Did God put them to death? No. God provided animals to die in their place. This was God's way of punishing their sin without punishing them. That is mercy. Grace. Now look at Adam and Eve's beautiful clothing. Did these two lawbreakers deserve this gift? No, but God showed them kindness by dressing them in the skins of the sacrificed animals. That is grace. Because of what the Lord did for them, Adam and Eve were happy to be with God again. The animal blood covered their sin. Adam and Eve deserved to die that day, but innocent animals had died in their place. The animal skin robes covered their shame. Once again, Adam and Eve felt comfortable to be in the presence of God. Thousands of years later, one of God's prophets wrote, I am overwhelmed with joy in the Lord my God. For he has dressed me with the clothing of salvation and draped me in a robe of righteousness. Only God has a way to make sinners right again. When God expelled the rebellious angels from heaven, their doom was sealed. These spirit beings who had lived in the blazing light of heaven had no excuse for their sin. But for sin-contaminated humans, the Lord had a plan to get them back if they would trust him. Still, sin has consequences. Just as God put Lucifer and his evil angels out of the heavenly paradise, so now God put the man and his wife out of the earthly paradise. After banishing them from the garden, the Lord God stationed mighty angelic beings to the east of Eden, and a flaming sword flashed back and forth, guarding the way to the tree of life. The tree of life was the other special tree in the middle of the garden. Only perfect people could eat from it. Adam and Eve were no longer perfect. They had sinned and must grow old and die. Our great creator God is holy. This means he is pure, clean, perfect and righteous. Because of his holy nature and holy laws, he must punish sin with death, separation from the source of life. 
Some people think that God is so great that he can ignore the laws he himself has decreed. Imagine a courtroom where the judge refuses to enforce the laws of the land. Would you say that such a judge is great? Imagine a football match where the head referee ignores the rules of the game. Would you call him a great referee or a bad referee? Satan wanted Eve to believe that her creator would not enforce his rules, that he would not punish lawbreakers with death. But the righteous king and judge of the universe always keeps his word. God is great. You can trust him. Your throne is founded on two strong pillars, righteousness and justice. Unfailing love and truth walk before you as attendants. See if you can answer this riddle. What can Satan and humans do that the Lord God cannot do? Here is God's own answer. I will not break my covenant. I will not take back a single word. In my holiness, I cannot lie.